So that's Bryansk in the distance. I think I can zoom in on it a little bit there. We've got a wagon which uh, needs to come off, uh, goes with the breakout units. I uh, have a little uh, consternation going on in regards to the um, great video, right? Really, I'm right on the ball. I'm nailing it straight off the bat. Breakouts. In the rules for breakouts, there's a situation where it says the first turn that you are out of trace, you are eligible to make this breakout, which ignores all these other preconditions that are typically part of uh, being in or out of, uh, in or out of uh, being eligible to break out. And so uh, it's a very lenient uh, situation. You roll the dice and try and break out. And so it's the words when you're first out of trace. And so you test this at the very beginning of your turn, which is what we did here. And um, see if you're going to be in, uh, so you test to see if you're in trace. And if you're not, well, then you can roll for breakout. But if I've been using uh, the tree bark as a substitute for trace, I'm not sure, and that's a case, that's a special rule for from uh, GB2 and Case Blue, so it's not in the base rules. Does that mean at that point that I chose to use them, I wasn't in trace and therefore I'm not eligible to break out? Or that now that I've run out of tree bark, I can then try, because now I really am out of trace, try to break out. It's a minor point. I guess it doesn't really matter whether either they roll for attrition and die or they rolled it on this, uh, this uh, one through six scale and die anyway. Although the, the breakout was actually pretty successful, the, a bunch of guys uh, made it away, but uh, they don't come back for six turns, which you know, which is probably uh, uh, probably fair enough. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's just it's a dozen units, a dozen dinky twelve two twos. So that's what's going on in Bryant's. Bryant's is done. I mean, there's nothing left. There's that one guy. Whoa! And he had, uh, uh, you know what? He gets to stay because I had one T left. I probably could have left a couple of units, but I roll for more. Let's just take this guy off and just make him dead because that's just kind of how I am. All right, so Bryansk is done finally. And of course now it's going to be the Germans' turn. And the German don't, Germans who knew this was coming, have they pre-positioned their rail conversion unit so they can, rail, can convert the rail really quickly? Not so much because we've got other shit going on that's really important. All right, so the Soviets, it's... Uh, we're going to roll on into, I can't see the turn chart from here, this lights my eyes, 26th, the 26th of November. So we're almost at the end of the November turn, November month. And when we get to that point, if you recall, way back in November last year, when we started this crazy exercise, or December, whatever it was, I wrote up a, an operations plan for the, for the Germans. And, uh, and we had a general plan for the Soviets, which was basically just try and hold on to key junctions, which we've kind of sort of done okay. Um, I think the Germans played things very differently than perhaps they did historically, but they also, uh, and probably haven't made as significant advances as they would have, but I think they've also achieved more on a broader front than might otherwise have happened given the weather, all the frickin' mud and stuff like that, right? Okay, so, um, what was I gonna say? So, I have this plan, and what we're gonna do at the end of November is, my, my elbow is sticking to the table and I'm picking up pieces. Uh, uh, the, uh, we're, gonna do, we're gonna look at that plan and see what we've achieved, how far we got, what happened, what went right, what went wrong, and that'll be the end of two months of gameplay time. And at that point, We'll uh, assess whether we want to continue with uh, Case Blue and run through December and January. Uh, the end of December is a good point to stop because that's the end of 41 and the end of the 1941 virtual conditions uh, things, if that's you, what you care about. And uh, then January rolls around and then a different set of conditions that uh, allow you to win uh, as the Germans. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what we're going to do in, in, in that regard. Uh, we'll see, I don't know whether I'll keep going or not. I'm quite enjoying it. I just, I really don't feel very focused at the moment to, uh, I'm only getting half a turn um, 
or maybe a turn or week done or something like that and uh, it's a little disjointed it's not as much fun when, when I can't when I can sit down and play two turns or three turns a week uh, and not because I'm playing anything else at the moment I have nothing else set up physically set up I, I just I'm in a kind of a funk with games at the moment and I, and I I'm, I'm feeling a tad intimidated by a few different systems and I'm not sure that I want to kind of jump into something meaty and heavy right at this point. So I'm deciding to play either nothing or post boring crap on uh, my blog, either way. All right, let's roll. Uh, that's the end of the Soviet turn. Let's kind of skim back. You can see where things are at. Uh, <clears throat> not much of an opportunity for the Germans here to uh, to try and stop, them, stop the Germans here. Uh, we've kind of put some filler uh, road bumps in the way while we try and reinforce this river here. I was really surprised at how effective this German punch through here was and uh, it caught, kind of caught the whole Tula defense uh, off guard, which I had spent quite a bit of time uh, building up and had neglected one one hex here. It only had one Ur uh, brigade in it. Uh, dang it. Uh, same over here. We managed to uh, we're managing to wrap up these guys uh, here, so we'll have that town taken care of pretty quickly. Uh, that's Kaluga there, and then I, I think as I read this book about the northern the northern approaches, and I really do want to experiment with Rajev and see just how far we can uh, we can get with Rajev and coming down through Kalin and, and then south towards uh, Moscow, from, <laughs> Moscow from the north. Uh, over uh, on the southern portion of the map, uh, same sort of situation. Kharkov has basically been abandoned, and we will uh, we will allow the uh, the Soviets to kind of skate out of there. Although they're in dire straits, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, you know forces approaching this town here. Uh, the approaches here as well. Oh, I'll show you the breakouts of units in a second, and we've also got units dipping into here. So I, I'm, I'm almost evenly kind of across the map. Let me just move this guy. Can I move this out of the way? I can make it smaller. There you go. Uh, so I, I've got a pretty even Stevens approach across the board. Once we knock off Kharkov, I can I can ship reinforcements right into that hex once the rail's converted. Here are the breakouts. Uh, this out of the way. Here are the breakout units. That's when they'll be coming back in on December uh, 1st, 5, 8, and 12. And that's a wrap up for us on uh, the end of November 22nd, I believe it is. So uh, we'll uh, talk to you guys soon and have a good one. All right, ciao.